Um, thank you for joining me this afternoon for this Green Safari's webinar. Um, please feel free to write any questions you have um, in the Q&A or chat box, and I'll be very happy to answer them at the end of the presentation. Um, it'll probably be lasting about um, half an hour, because uh, we've got quite a few properties to go through. But as I said, it is being recorded, so don't worry if you have to sneak off halfway through. Um, I will be um, sending you a copy of the recording afterwards. So Green Safaris was founded by, it's really the brainchild of Vincent Cowanhoven, who's actually um, from the Netherlands, from Freezing Netherlands. Um, and he has, um, he actually was involved in a totally different industry and just loved Africa, loved traveling to Africa, passionate about conservation. And it was always his dream to set up a company whereby they really developed um, tourism where it is, it is most needed in those frontier destinations. So he, and really where he would add value. So he looked at potentially Botswana and other more established tourism destinations and felt that Zambia actually, in terms of what it offered as a, as a spy destination, but in terms of um, the exposure and the impact it could benefit from, um, he felt that Zambia was was the place he wanted to, to set up in. Um, so really, Green Safaris is, is built on, on these four pillars. Um, the first is that doing your imagination. So whether that be living in a tree house or swimming in a pool on top of Victoria Falls. Um, the second one is empowering our people. You know, how do we how do we educate them? How do we teach them? How do we work with them? And um, Green Safaris, through their Green um, Foundation, is incredible in terms of supporting and educating and training uh, their team. Um, the third pillar is, is conserving our environment. Um, so if you took away everything, what would your footprint be? And this is really where they have championed um, technology in particular. So they have pioneered the concept of green safaris. Um, we have five electric vehicles. We also now have a solar electric um, boat and also the first solar um, DAO as well. Um, and in all of our properties, we're, we're very, very active through um, in terms of the environment activity we do. We have two full time um, conservation officers who, officers who work with us um, as part of the Green Foundation. And if you look on our website, I, I will also send you through information, more information about what we do in terms of the Green Foundation. Um, and the last pillar is protecting our wildlife. So this is, in a lot of our areas we work in, there's already really well-established, excellent NGOs that we support. Um, that's including Panthera and Kafiri, uh, Zambia Carnivore Programme, and also Conservation um, South Wangra. So working very actively with these organisations that are already doing a fantastic job in terms of uh, protecting our wildlife. As I say, there's a lot more information about the Green Foundation on our website. And I also, in my follow-up, will we'll, um, include a really cool infographic that just gives you a quick summary of what they achieved in a year. Um, but essentially, um, in terms of the, 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 uh, the, the company itself and um, the, the circuit, really there is a complete circuit um, you can actually do with your guests um, and our reservation team are brilliant. They are very used to helping with transfers. So it gives you an amazing cross section of really the highlights um, of Zambia. Um, and then ending in Lake Malawi and Kaimaya. Um, so his, um, uh, Vincent's first uh, foray into Zambia was actually Ela Safari Lodge, which he opened about nine years ago now in the Kafui. Um, our two newest camps are Chisa Busanga Camp in the Busanga Plains and Shawa Luanga Camp in South Wangwa, both of which opened in, um, in the summer of last year. Um, his, first part, his first development was Ela Safari Lodge, and then he actually bought um, Tongabizi, um, and Kaimaya, which both of which are real kind of grand names of the Zambia and Malawi safari uh, circuit. Uh, Tongabizi was 30 years old and Kaimaya was 25 years old. So you've got this really interesting mix of these incredible properties with amazing heritage and yet these brand new, very pioneering properties as well. Um, but essentially they complement each other so well. And it, as I say, it offers an, an amazing circuit showcasing um, the best of Zambia. The only spot we have um, Missing is, is Lower Zambezi, but watch the space, because hopefully that might change. Um, but yeah, so it's a, it's a really amazing overview. And also in terms of selling, um, we run a, a discounted for the longer uh, offer, a stay pay offer. So um, the, the longer you stay, the more the, the discount is. Um, and also the other thing that's key about uh, our properties is they're very well priced. Um, so Tongabezi being the most established um, is the higher end of the price point, but actually, um, Shawa and Ila are really, really affordable in terms of the safari offering for, uh, for Zambia. So these are the green season rates, but I'll send you the full rate sheet um, after, the, after the presentation. As I mentioned, the, the longer you stay, the more of a discount you get. 
Um, so these are our discounted offers we, we uh, run. So essentially, if you book two properties, you get 10% additional discount. If you book, book three, um, well, between seven and nine nights, 20%, and then 10 nights or more, you get a 30% discount. And we also offer subsidized flights, uh, particularly, particularly up to the Kafiri. So starting, most of our itineraries start with Tongabizi um, and the Victoria Falls. Um, Tongabizi and its sister property, Cinderbizi, which is just a 10 minute boat ride uh, down the river from Tongabizi. So this is really where we kind of start outdoing our imagination. It is the most spectacular spot on the Zambezi River. Um, like Paimaya, Tongabizi has kind of developed over time and has quite a kind of mix of different rooms, but essentially there is a room that suits everyone. So from the river cottages, which are much more suited to, um, to couples, up to the, um, the garden house, um, which is brilliant for families, Tangala house, which is a four bedroom exclusive use villa. So there's really something for everything. And this is where the reservations team are brilliant because the more information you can give them about your clients, the better they can suit them to the room. Um, so Tongabees is open all year round and it's written to green and high season. Um, and in terms of the experience, green season tends to be more afternoon showers so between November and March. Um, and then high season is from 1st of May to the 30th of September. These are warm days with cool evenings and mornings. Sometimes it does get quite chilly in Zambia. People always forget that actually Africa can get quite cold. So it's definitely worth um, bringing warm clothing during this time. Um, and then obviously Easter, Christmas and New Year falls into high season as well. So starting with the accommodation, these are our river cottages. So these come under the valet. They've got a beautiful big deck right on the river. Um, hence the reason why they're called river cottages and hence the reason why they are better for couples as opposed to um, families. As you can see, um, it's very open and stunning. Um, but the garden house, which is set back slightly and more has a, more of a wall around it, um, is slightly safer for, for families. Um, but just stunning, stunning uh, locations. Um, this is a nut house, which is our, our um, beautiful, big, um, more, very popular with honeymoons, um, with a plunge pool, um, and just stunning, big, um, open areas. And Lollard's interior design comes from um, Kutundu, which is the women's group that um, was set up in Kaimaya and produces a lot of the beautiful chandeliers, beading work you'll see throughout all of the rooms. Um, so there are two family rooms which have two bedrooms in them. And then the others are various style, styles of, uh, of individual rooms. This is the garden house, which, as you can see, has a, the, the wall around it set back slightly from the river. So brilliant for families with younger children, with both, both a master room and a, um, a, a twin room. This is the, the tree house, which is more open. Um, so this is, um, it doesn't have air con, because as you can see, it's totally open, so it wouldn't do any good. There is a cooler above the bed. Um, but actually, it's it's right on the river. It's really, really beautiful. Um, but for those clients that are maybe a bit more nervous, probably not ideal um, for them. Although uh, when we stayed down there on the farm trip, this was a favourite room for most of the agents because it is so unbelievably stunning. Um, and then you have this beautiful big decks area right on the river. Um, so our guests come for pre-dinner drinks um, or can just sit and relax throughout the day overlooking the river. Tangala House is our exclusive use house. This is four bedrooms. Um, and actually throughout all the properties at um, Ungreen Safaris, we now have an option for an exclusive use house, either whether they are taken um, individually like Tangala Houses, or for example, Chisa and the Bisanga Plains, there's only four nests. So that works brilliantly as a small group as well. Um, and then moving on to Cinderbizi. So Cinderbizi is just about a 10 minute boat ride away from Tongabizi. Um, and it's only five chalets. Um, we have quite a few guests actually really like doing a twin centre with Tongabizi and Cinderbizi. As you see, it's a totally different experience. You're on an island in the middle of the river, so you are totally surrounded by water. Not so good for children in this property because it is literally um, on the water. Um, but and it's beautiful and open and just really, really chilled. You are totally immersed in your environment. Um, really beautiful rooms that are all quite open, um, but it all is just works and much smaller, only, only five rooms in total, so much more of a kind of intimate experience. But we often have guests who really like combining um, a couple of nights at Tonga Beezy and then one night at Cinder Beezy. Um, and then in terms of activities in this area, well, you are um, on the river, you are on the uh, Zambezi River. Um, we, this is our squeaky sandbar, we call squeaky sandbar. So you come here for sundowners or for picnics. Um, and then we also have um, a beautiful different dining options. This is our floating dining experience. Um, this is our DAO that we actually now made um, solar powered. 
So I need to get an updated photo for that. Um, but we, it also does have an engine because in the Zambezi River, you do need to sometimes um, escape slightly faster. So it does have an engine for kind of emergencies, but um, essentially it is a yeah very, very uh, peaceful, very um, calming way of exploring the Zambezi. And then obviously you are um, about 40 minute from 40 minute drive from Victoria Falls. Um, and Tongabizi actually own um, Livingston Island, which is located right at the top of the falls, and also um, Devil's Pool, which is this um, pool here. So um, this is our fan trip from last year. Um, it was probably one of the most terrifying slash exhilarating experiences of my life. And um, what they don't tell you is um, in Devil's Pool, as well as the rushing water, you also have little fish that nibble your feet while you're in the water, which gave me such a fright and then you went over the edge. Not quite, but um, yeah, it, it's an amazing experience. It's an absolute once in a lifetime experience. And um, as guests at Tonga Breezy, we do get kind of priority, but it's always worth booking in advance. Um, and that is a, and what they can do is they, they have an experience where you go to Livingston Island, you have a kind of coffee or lunch or tea, um, and then you come to the pool. And um, the pools are um, really, they run from, it opens in August and runs through to February. Um, and in March, the actual Livingston Island closes as well. But when you can't get to Devil's Pool, there's also Angel's Pool, which is nearby, which is better for when the, the water level is lower. Um, so you can always have some kind of experience. Um, but between August and February is the best time for doing that experience. So then the next stop on the circuit is about an hour and a half right away up to Kafiri National Park. So Kafiri National Park is, is the largest park in Zambia. It's one of the largest parks in Africa. It's a real kind of wild part of Africa. This was Africa's national park. It was, um, Margaret Thatcher used to um, have a home here there. She used to bring heads of state down there. Um, and unfortunately over the last kind of 35, 40 years, it just hasn't been managed properly in terms of particularly poaching. But the good news is that as of this year, um, African parks have now been brought in to manage the park and they have got um, obviously huge funding behind them and they are hugely successful in terms of an organization so it's really really exciting because it's a real park to keep your eye on and to watch because it still has amazing game um, and beautiful landscapes but it just doesn't have the people um, and the game now in particular is getting more used to tourists coming back so it's getting much more relaxed um, so it really is the most spectacular um, spot to go to, it's um, got one of the largest um, uh, diversity uh, populations of, of different diversity, different species of antelope. Um, and it's just it's utterly, utterly stunning. Um, so Edith's Fire Lodge was uh, Vincent, the owner of Green's Fire, so it's his first lodge that he built about nine years ago. Um, so there are um, 10 rooms in total. Um, and they're all on the river. Um, and in terms of the seasons, it's closed from the end of January to the beginning of March. Um, and then uh, we have split into high season and rainy season as well. Um, but it's a, it's a huge park. It was established in the 50s and it is um, home to lots of different animals, cheetah, leopard, lion, wild dog, elephant. The elephants are more skittish um, because obviously they have a longer memory. Um, so they are more nervous. Um, but there's still a lot of them there. And we saw amazing pride of lion when we were there and also a cheetah with her kill who's very relaxed about us coming quite close because we were in an e-vehicle, so it's totally silent. And there's over 500 rec recorded species of birds as well. So the rooms at Ela are all built on decks overlooking the river, um, beautiful big open rooms, and two of them have these lovely big bathtubs on them as well, um, and uh, outdoor shower area as well. Just a really, really stunning, quite simple design, uh, but it's all about the location, all about the river. Um, this is the main bar area. Um, and the big infinity pool as well, again, right on the river. And here we actually have, this is our, our silent, we're taking silent safaris to a whole new level in terms of a silent boat. So this is our electric boat um, that we go up the river and you can go fishing in, or we tend to use for lunches. And it's lovely because you can just kind of drift quietly by and then start the engine and it's totally silent. Um, so this is a really popular experience. You can also do fishing in this area as well. Um, it's great fishing and lots of kind of aquatic animals right in front of you. you also do walking safaris in the Kafiri. Um, and this is the, the silent the silent safari boat with the solar panels on top. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we work really closely with Panthera, uh, the carnival program in the, in the Kafiri National Park. And for guests who want to know more about this, Panthera are always really good at coming along in the evenings and sitting around the fire and sitting with our guests and talking about the programs that they run. Um, so you can you have this opportunity to really kind of get under the skin in terms of the conservation work 
being done in the surrounds. Um, often, obviously, going on safari is never the same without having a bush breakfast. Um, and we also have a spa as well, which opened this year. Um, so it's a really, it's a very, very kind of um, calming environment to be in in the national park um, because you're right on the river. I and mean, then a short flight away, about 20 minute uh, flight away is Chisa Busanga camp. So this is our newest camp. This opened in July last year. And there's only four of these what we call nests. Um, and some of you may have spotted that it looks very, very like a weaver's nest. And that was actually the inspiration for the rooms at Chisa Busanga. The Busanga Plains is, um, is actually underwater uh, for, for most of the year. It's only opened at the beginning of June to the middle of November. And the rest of the time, it's it's a flood. So um, they had to come up with a design which was raised off the ground, um, so it had minimal impact on the on the animals, but also minimal impact on the design. In fact, that when the water levels rise, it won't cause too much damage. Um, so they're built in the style of a weaver's nest, and it, we also have one with a lift. And the lift is totally it's one hundred percent solar powered. This camp, um, and uh, these are the rooms. So you have a small shower bathroom inside, um, large bed, and then you have this little platform area, the table area where you can sit. And because you're so elevated, you have the most stunning views over the Busanga Plains. Um, the Busanga Plains is because they are underwater most of the year, when the water recedes and the green shoots come through, there's a lot of game that come down to the Busanga Plains. So that means a lot of um, plains game come first, and then obviously predators come as well. So whilst it is a shorter season, it is the most incredible season. And Busanga Plains is very well known for, for the red mist. So in the early mornings, particularly after the, the waters have receded, uh, when the sun starts shining on it and the mist is, is, is coming up from the, from the moisture from the ground, it has this amazing kind of slightly red color to it, which is utterly beautiful. This is the main area. So it's built as a, a kind of concrete base, which everything is totally taken away during um, the rains, except for the concrete base. It's then sanded down, repainted and covered with a thin, layer of sand so it's very pristine um after the the kind of the, the floods this side of um, boma area um so really popular for for um under the sky under the stars dinners um, and then our lounge area as well so with only four nests it's a very very small very intimate camp so it's often taken over for exclusive use as well i mean it works really well for that um and then the game experience is just phenomenal because there's so much grass, there's so many planes game, there's so many predators. It's just the most incredible um, game experience. And not many, the only other, uh, any other property near us is a wilderness property. So you literally have you know, the whole area to yourself. And with only four rooms at Busanga, at Chisa Busanga, it's a very, very kind of intimate experience. Um, you can actually get to Kafuri, to Elis Fire Lodge by, by, by uh, road from Lusaka. Chisa, you have to fly. Um, so most guests then coming from, if you want to go from Chisa to South Wanga, they have to come back via Lusaka, and most guests will then jump on a pro flight um, to, um, to Mfuri in, in South Wanga. So moving on to shower at Luanga camp. So shower, the area where shower camp is actually uh, located was, was handpicked by a really amazing walking guide called Jacob Shower, who worked with, he trained with Norman Carr, um, and he has won the Wanderlust, um, one of the Wanderlust best guides. He's just the most incredible kind of legend from the South Wanga. And Vincent, the owner of Green Safaris, actually went on a walking safari with him and was saying how he'd love to build a camp in, in South Wanga. And Jacob had this land, but didn't have the resources. And so the two of them have actually teamed up to um, build this camp in the, in the South Wanga. So again, it's only small. Um, there are, are Three tents that are that are doubles, and then one that's a family unit. It's a kind of interconnected, um, much larger family unit. Um, so it's open from the seventh of April to the third of Jan. So it has a longer season than particularly um, Busanga Plains does. But again, like Busanga Plains, it's a really unique design. So it's elevated off the ground again, so that when it's flooding, it doesn't get impacted, but also it has lower impact in terms of the animals as well. And the sides are are, are the flaps kind of are raised. So you have this, um, the air that can circulate around and it's it's always like kind of, um, I hope you see an image of the actual total uh, 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 camp, but it's like a kind of, um, it's like a witch's hat. So the hot air circulates up. So we were there in November last year, which is which is very, very hot time to be in South Wanga and it's still very comfortable to sleep in with a, with a fan um, and the flaps opened, but obviously mosquito nets uh, pulled down. 
Um, so it's right on the, the Luanga River. It's a beautiful spot. It's actually in the GMA, but the other side of that river is the park. So we have, at the moment, you have a kind of pontoon that you go across, um, and it means that actually you are in the park for about an hour before any other guests do, because there's no properties in that park, in the park, in that area. So you really do have optimal location um, that for, it takes about two minutes to drive down to the pontoon, about two minutes to cross over. So literally within about 10 minutes, you are in the heart of the national park. Um, but also being in the GMA, it means there's more flexibility in terms of um, building, but also in terms of fees as well. You don't have to pay um, the park fees as much, but um, it's, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful spot. And the staff here, the staff here actually are mostly from the local villages and they helped build the camp. And then when they're looking to employ um, the waiters and the hospitality staff, the staff are very keen to actually um, interview themselves. So most of the, the waiters and the staff you'll find at the camp actually have been involved with it right from the start. They have helped actually build the entire camp. So you have this incredible, we always get amazing, amazing feedback about our staff at, um, at Shower because they just have this, this, this amazing kind of um, responsibility and love for the camp because they actually help build it themselves. Um, this is the pool, which is much needed, particularly in the hot um, in the hot months. Um, and one of the most popular things to do is have we have breakfast on the on the, the dry river bed in front of the camp, and then go out for um, our our game drives, or often sundowners at the end of the day as well in front of the campfire. But South Rangra is is just the most stunning, stunning place, as well as being really the home of walking safaris. It's just the most phenomenal game experience, but also beautiful landscape with the Luanga River kind of weaving its way through the middle of it. Um, it's just, yeah, it's 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 a really, really stunning, stunning place to go on safari with, again, without the numbers that you'll find in other parts of Southern Africa. And then finally, we're ending up on Kaiamaya. At the moment, you have to fly um, by the long way from Mfiri to go to Kaiamaya, but we are hoping that's going to change. We're actually still working on trying to get um, Lacoma Island um, a customs um, ports so you can actually fly directly from uh, Luangra to South Luangra to Kaimaya, which would make a huge difference. At the moment, it's still quite a, straight, a straightforward journey. You fly about an hour's flight down to Lilongwe and then about some hours from Lilongwe to um, Lakoma Island and Lake Malawi. So um, Kaimaya actually means maybe tomorrow in the local language, and it is just the most um, sensational spot to end your safari. It's just so beautiful and so relaxing. And people often think, oh, let's go to the coast, but actually you forget that this is, Lake Malawi is essentially like being on the coast. You know, when, where you look out, all you see is water and the water is fresh. Um, so uh, you have, you know, when you go for a swim, you're not covered in, in salt afterwards. Um, the, there are, again, a bit like Tonga Bizi, there, there are a number of different rooms. Um, so 12 rooms in total, but they're all, some of them are houses with two bedrooms in, some of them are, are larger premium rooms, some are family houses. So again, I've got a really good PDF that our marketing team um, did where it describes each room. Um, and actually our images are, are uh, divided into each room um, type. So you can definitely work it out yourself, but actually, to be honest, leave it to the reservations team. Just tell them what your clients are like, what, what their mobility is like, because one of the rooms is slightly more steep and they will be able to match your, your clients into the right room for them. Um, so it's open the end of March through to the 3rd of January. Um, and again, just has the green and, and high season. So green season running from 1st of April to the end of July, then for November and, and this time of year till through to 22nd of December. And that means the day, the day temperature is about 25 degrees, so it's cooler at night. There's some chance of rain. Um, and then the high season being um, Easter, 1st of August through to end of October, and then um, over the Christmas and New Year period. And then it's really comfortable weather with no rain. So the rooms are just so, so coolly designed. Again, like Tonga Bizi, a lot of the, um, the interiors have come from the Kutundu Women's Workshop, which is next, just literally down the next door bay, um, at which most of our guests will go and see because they love it. And also there's an amazing shop there where you can buy a lot of the products. Um, so just a real variety of different room types. You may notice that we actually had a photo shoot done recently. So this is, these are hot off the press, these images. So they're the whole, all the rooms have been totally whitewashed inside, um, a big renovation and just look utterly beautiful. These lovely light um, rooms and lovely kind of chandelier fabrics. This is actually in Domo house. So this is our exclusive use uh, four bedroom house. Um, and this is just a short, um, short drive away from the other rooms. So again, like Tangala House and Tongabizi, 
You then have um, Chiso, which is going to be taken over exclusively, as can Shawa and as she at Ila, we are, um, Princeton is going to start building a exclusive use villa there as well. So you can do a whole circuit as exclusive use or as a small group if you wanted to, which would work really well. Um, but yeah, just, just beautiful, beautiful location. And obviously being so near the water, this is just some of the interior designs, um, you've got a huge variety of activities you can do there. So you can go diving straight from straight from the beach. Um, and they also have uh, they have um, different they have motorboats, you can do weight, uh, wakeboarding. You also have um, non-motorboat water sports as well. So sailing, stand-up paddle boarding. We have a spa, which is obviously very popular. And we also have these brilliant electric bikes. So you can just borrow these electric bikes. And I loved it because you can actually go further afield. Lacoma is actually quite a populated island. So it's nice to, to be able to go out on the bikes and cycle through villages and meet the locals and seeing them drying their fish like they are here and actually getting out and you know experiencing a bit of the island. Um, and then obviously stand-up paddle balls, um, snorkels, sailing, as I mentioned. So this is my colleague Alice on the left-hand side. Um, last year we were there just taking the electric bikes and going out and meeting the villagers. And then Lacoma Island also has the second largest cathedral in Africa, um, which is really quite amazing and quite bizarre. So you go into this cathedral and it's like you're in the middle of Wiltshire, um, and this amazing cathedral. Um, and then another very popular activity is, is going to see the women's group at the Kachundu workshop, which is next door to the property. And they're amazing, these women. So this, this white pole you have at the top here is actually what they do is they break up um, the old bottles you see on the right hand side, they smash them up, they put them in this tube with stones and sand and they, those two bicycle wheels then spin the tube around really fast to, to smooth the sand, to smooth the glass. And they then make those gla that glass into the chandeliers you see here, um, which have also got copper in them as well. And it's beautiful glass chandeliers that are now exported all over the world. Um, they also make these stunning beaded um, cushion covers, uh, throws. So a lot of guests really love going there and experiencing that as well. So really, I hope that this afternoon I've, I've, I've given you an overview of, of how um, Green Safari is in terms of the, the accommodation works, but also what underlines everything is really our Green Foundation. So through our conservation managers, they are just incredible in terms of what they do with the different properties. And each property is different, but each property has an opportunity for guests to engage, learn more, actually go out and experience it um, and just see the positive impact that tourism can do. Um, so I will send you a copy of our of our kind of Green, green Foundation information so you can find out more about that. Um, but thank you so much. That's the end of the presentation. So I'm going to stop sharing now and see, hopefully if I can see the questions. Um, but yes, um, yeah, no worries about receiving a copy of the recording. That's no problem. I'll send a full follow up with the recording and all the information you um, need. Uh, are the flights to Masanga and, the, and to Lacoma going daily next season? Um, between Busanga and, uh, and uh, Lusaka, actually, it is chartered as well. So yes, you can always buy that, obviously, if you charter. Um, and Lacoma, um, yeah, they actually go, they go daily, but also they also, it's a charter as well, but they also have introduced a new um, high-speed boat, which isn't new so much for our kind of Kaimaya guests, but it does mean that actually in terms of the flexibility, um, in terms of staffing and locals, it means that actually that's really opened up that area. So if you did have clients that just didn't want to fly, they can get the boat as well, which is um, which is a great option. Um, so a few more other questions here. Are all boats electric vehicles? Oh, sorry, are all vehicles and boats electric? Um, we have, not all the vehicles are electric, but the aim is to get them all electric. Um, we have five so far, and we have our solar powered um, uh, Dow and also uh, the silent boat at, um, at uh, Ela. But uh, obviously at Kaimaya, they are not all electric yet. Um, how long is the transfer between Ela and Chisa? About 20 minutes, so it's not long. It's a flight transfer, it's stunning, flying over Kifui National Park, so it's not long. Um, thank you so much for this magic break. Thank you, Aurelie. I'm glad that I could uh, let you escape from wherever you are in the world and take you, to, uh, take you to Zambia and Malawi. But as I mentioned, we have had a new photo shoot done, so I will send you my follow-up, all those images. Um, 
And uh, there's just, yeah, some really stunning ones there. And if you have any questions, do let me know. But hopefully I will, um, yeah, give you a little snapshot into Green Sororities and, and what they stand for and, you know, really what your clients can expect. But I can't underestimate how great our reservations team are and how efficiently they can kind of pull the whole itinerary together. We also have some itinerary examples I'll send you through as part of our follow-up as well. Um, but thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. This is actually our final webinar of 2022. And our new webinar schedule, I'll send through to you as well, so you can um, register for any of those that you want to, 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 um, to uh, sign up to. Uh, last question, where can we write to make some packages? Um, so I'll send you the reservations contact um, details, but also I will send you through some examples of the itineraries, which you can then use for your own internal information, or even if you want to send them to your clients. Um, and I'll, yeah, I'll send those through to you. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining me this afternoon, and I wish you a very happy Christmas and a happy new year as well.